Good morning, everyone. I'll just give it a couple of minutes before uh, you guys join us. See who comes up this morning. <clears throat> Good morning, Trisha. <clears throat> oh, my sister's with me. <laughs> What's up, Jen? Hey, Marsha, good morning. <clears throat> Just give it a couple of more seconds to see who else joins on. <clears throat> I'm glad you guys are with us this morning. Good morning, Raquel. <clears throat> Hey, Carlos, what's up, man? I'm enjoying uh, this scenery here in our pool. So peaceful out here today. Um, so I figured I'll just bring, uh, I'll bring the Bible study outdoors today. And um, I'm loving this area, man. Loving this area. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, we'll be... We'll be touching on Hebrews chapter 13. Yo, Robert, what's going on, man? Um, Hebrews chapter 13 this morning. So if you're there with me, I'm just going to go ahead and read. Um, I, I, I really feel like in, in this chapter, it's literally just summing up the entire book of Hebrews um, with just an application, like an applicational portion of it where us as believers, we're being challenged um, to not only just, like James says, be hearers of the word, but to also be doers of the word. And um, I was extremely challenged, you know, this entire week, going through these portions of scripture here, just this chapter, and just seeing how the, the author of Hebrews himself, um, you know, how, like you, you can really feel in his words, you know, as he's writing to to his audience that he really that he really longed uh, to be with them, that he knew them like at a such a personal level, you know. And at the same time, I I really feel like the message he was portraying back then is also uh, for today. It's like Leah said before, um, every everything in the Bible, every story in the Bible, it's it's an end time story. And um, and I feel like this is an end time story as well, because I, I kept as I was reading this, I kept getting portions of scripture, you know, going back to Matthew uh, 24 to Matthew 25. Um, is it still frozen? I'm getting feedback that it's still frozen. Can you guys hear me now? All right, perfect. If it froze, just go back out and come back in. That's usually what I do. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. <clears throat> and uh, Hebrews 13, I'll just read it. I'm gonna read the entire chapter. I'm just gonna be completely honest with you. Um, I am not gonna be able to cover each and every single thing here. Uh, but I do wanna zero in and just focus on some stuff that I believe that us um, as a body that we can take and that we can be encouraged, that we can be challenged in. Good morning, Gina. Um, and that we can just begin to apply these things because I believe that, I believe that once we really begin to walk out what's in this chapter, we're, we're really gonna feel the, the pleasure of God over us. Um, so let me just go ahead and read it. So Hebrews 13, it says, Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have been, some have entertained angels unaware. Remember those who are in prison as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated since you are in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous keep your life free from the love of money 
and be content with, with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods which have not benefited those devoted to them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy places by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burnt outside the camp so jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood therefore let us go him let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured for here we have no lasting city but we seek the city that is to come through him then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to god that is the fruit of his lips that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to god obey your leaders and submit to them for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account let them do this with joy and not with groaning for that will be of no advantage to you pray for us for we are for we are sure that we have a clear conscience desiring to act honorably in all things i urge you the more earnestly do this to do this in order that I may be restored uh, to you sooner now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead um, our Lord Jesus Christ the shepherd of the sheep by the blood of his eternal covenant equip you with everything good that you may do his will working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be the glory forever and ever amen I appeal to you brothers bear with my word of exhortation for I have written to you briefly you should know that our brother Timothy has been released with whom I shall see you if he comes soon greet all your leaders and all the Saints those who come from Italy send you greetings grace be with you all man such a weighty chapter and I'll be honest like I was reading this thing um, just over and over and over last night and um, <laughs> I just had to message Pastor Lee and I was like all right um, so how exactly do you cover an entire chapter in literally less than 30 minutes like it's it's impossible you know what I mean um, <clears throat> but what I love about this here is that I can zero in on on some of the things in this chapter but then you can also zero in on other things that the lord is speaking to you throughout the chapter as well and so i just really want to encourage dialogue this morning and throughout the rest of the day for those who aren't able to listen at this very moment so i'm going to focus more on the beginning portion of this because i feel like when it comes to you know the sacrifices that please god when you hear that term what are some of the things that you really that, that you think about when you hear sacrifices pleasing to God what are one of the you know the things that come to mind and for me normally it's like um, you know giving up of you know our time or ourselves you know what I'm saying or diving more into you know the secret places and you know prayer and um, just preaching devoting ourselves to the word and you know things of that sort um, <clears throat> But there's also other things that the Lord looks at and he is so pleased when the body of Christ engages in it that we don't count um, as sacrifices or we don't count as spiritual. And um, for example, let brotherly love continue. Like this is literally talking about the relationship that we have with each other in the, in, in the church. Um, the relationship, how we engage with one another. Um, of course this is completely marked you know our entire relationships are marked by brotherly love and I believe that that in and of itself is the fruit of faith um, the very fruit that we have faith in the Lord is being walked out by the way that we love one another and and I feel like 
it goes back to you know Hebrews 10 24 when you know the Bible basically talks about like let us strive you know to to basically love one another let us strive to to dive into that place where we have genuine love for one another where we can continue to to walk it out um, that I believe that that kind of love uh, being demonstrated uh, within a body of Christ um, will basically help us to hold on and to really hold on uh, by faith and we'll be able to really grip on the true rest that is found in Jesus and I believe that that's that kind of love that will study us I believe that's that kind of love that will help us to endure um, and that this in and of itself it is it's very pleasing to God um, even the things that you don't really deem as high and spiritual you know what I'm saying God really looks at this stuff and he loves it you know he says do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers for his, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware um, I love that I love that portion because brotherly love in order for it to continue um, it's linked with hospitality not only just linked with hospitality um, with one another but it also brings about a remembrance within a body of Christ for those who are being persecuted for those who are um, currently in prison it unlocks um, parts of our heart where we begin to see like we begin to actually feel where people are uh, for example the scripture says remember those who are in prison as though in prison with them you know that 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 portion there struck me because when was the last time we thought of somebody in prison and we literally positioned ourselves with them there like what are they feeling what can they be thinking what's going on right now in their mind what's going on right now in their hearts this unlocks doors for us to begin to intercede and I believe that this kind of sacrifice the Lord loves it and it's pleasing to him and it reminds me of a word that the Lord gave us um, at at our church where he said if you steward um, if you steward other you know other fields and I may not be saying it you know correctly but if you steward other fields God will allow it to spring up here in your own land in your own field you know and I feel like with us being able to lay ourselves down for the sake of somebody else uh, with you know continuing to love with a brotherly kind of love and affection towards one another and we're able to place ourselves in other people's positions just like Jesus has placed himself in a position where he is able to completely identify um, I believe that this is the th this is the kind of love that the Lord looks at and he's like man I I love that and because you're sowing in in that specific type of field I'm gonna allow this thing to spring up in your own field you know and and the Lord will begin to really answer prayers that you've been praying for maybe years possibly decades and you're gonna see that spring up because you decided to step back and say you know what I'm going to tend to this next person field uh, trusting in the Lord that he will cause it to spring up in mine does that make sense So I was remembering and um, I remember I had this I had this uh, dream and it was pertaining to uh, Matthew Matthew 25 and um, and again I really believe this is just an end times you know theme all over again because in the dream you know I was in my old apartment and real quick um, I had uh, my my brother Chris he's uh in, in my dreams he represents an, uh, he represents an evangelist and my wife was getting ready and Chris was calling me out the window I was seven stories high and he was just like hey man come down come down we gotta go we gotta you know we gotta hit the streets and and I was like all right hold on you know my wife is getting ready and um, next thing you know I was walking through the hallway and I realized that the hallway was just freshly painted but I began to rip out some of the some of the paint that was on the wall and I began to see that there was letters um, all over the wall so I began to rip out all the paint um, in that hallway and then I realized that 
that what was on that very wall said um it said repent and so i was like repent and then i kept peeling off and then i noticed the scripture written on it was matthew 25 um and it's the the part of the scripture where you know jesus was like i'm going to you know when i come i'm going to separate the sheep and the goats um and you know and then he basically focuses on the on you know on the sheep and then he basically uh ends up letting them know like you know you're the ones that fed me you're the ones that clothed me you know when i was sick you took care of me when i was in prison you visited me and so on right and then um they asked him well lord when when do we do these things you know and he said you know because you did it to the least of these you ended up you ended up doing that to me and then he turns to the goats and he says the same thing except he says that you didn't feed me you didn't clothe me when i was naked you didn't visit me when i was in prison you didn't clothe me um you know and this 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 type of dream i felt like um the lord was highlighting listen you know we have we have strayed from the very things that that the body of christ really needs to be doing as far as genuine love is concerned we've become more internal and more uh wrapped up in a bubble than engaging um with the world with engaging with the community and really spreading um that kind of love and affection that the lord has instilled in us to take care of of those as if we were doing it unto him like if it was literally him and and i felt like this is the this is the part of the portion um in this chapter well in this verse that the lord is saying remember those remember those who are in prison as though you are with them remember those who are mistreated because since you are also in the body remember those remember them because how we respond to people like this could it be possible that we're responding the same way in our relationship with the Lord? Could it be possible that we're treating Holy Spirit this same exact way by the way that we're choosing to respond just to these people? And I don't know about you, but that's that's really convicting for me. And I, I just feel like, um, you know, the Lord is still working things in my own heart um, in this area. Let's see what some of you guys here are saying. Uh, missing a couple here All right, Debbie saying yes, you don't have to be an actual prison and be in prison If you don't have Jesus in your life without Jesus you have no love or Jesus you're absolutely right there's um there I mean there's definitely a a sense of knowing that You're bound you don't have to actually be in a physical prison um, sometimes we're able to see in a spiritual sense that, um, you know, as you remember, let's just say, for example, we remember some of our family members at the time, you know, my mother, my, my father, you know, my grandmother, you know, when I look at them, I remember them that they're in prison, you know what I'm saying? And they may not necessarily see it at this very moment, um, because of course their, their eyes haven't been um unbound to those very things but we have to remember them as though we were there with them because the reality is we were we were once there with them and that should literally fuel our ammo for intercession um for them you know what i mean and show them love and be there for them um not letting them of course take advantage of you but be there for them showing them godly love and affection amen um, let's move on real quick Let marriage be held um, In honor of, among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous This is extremely important because we're not living in a society that doesn't value marriage um, Any longer doesn't value the commitment in marriage doesn't honor marriage uh, what's so what, what's whatsoever you know, and even those who end up getting married and don't really understand the the portion, uh, the covenant that's being made between one another and how so much it reflects our relationship and our covenant with God. When they don't understand that, they become sexually immoral. They defile the marriage bed. And 
it's so sad because the Lord will literally look at that and judge that. They will judge that. Of course, if they don't have, you know, if they don't repent and turn to him. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like this is something that in, in as we dive closer into the end times, this is going to be another subject and topic that, you know, the, the enemy is really going to try to attack. Um, and I feel like we need to stand up for what's right. You know, so this entire chapter, as I'm reading this, it's more like, you know, body of Christ. Listen, remember, beloved, stand your ground, take your place, love well, you know, stand for what's right. Remember those who, who, um, you know, who have either fallen or gone through these things, you know, remember also those who are, who haven't, you know, come to the Lord, but remain, remain in, in this, Remain in faith. Remain in true rest that is found in Christ. Remain in, in having confidence in God. So I feel like this is what this entire portion is about. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep going here. I feel like remembering when he says that very word he says it a couple of times here in his in his passages remember your leaders remember those who are in prison remember remember i feel like that's literally an invitation to to respond properly to have an active response um to both the needs of others and you know to also your your very own needs and to to come into partnership with the lord i feel like we shouldn't we shouldn't separate ourselves um, and wrap ourselves up in a bubble. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we should really, um, you know, be sensitive to also the needs of others, um, you know, during that time. But I feel like that very word, remember, it's it's an invitation to come into the very things that Jesus is asking us to come into, to do the very things that he did, um, you know, before. I really feel like he's we, we're, we're going to do so much more because we're coming into partnership with what he desires with what he loves so verse 5 keep your life um keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have for he said i will never leave you nor forsake you listen i honestly feel that the very antidote to the disease of the love of money is being content i feel like that's the very cure itself it's not like um there's not like an actual you know steps or anything like that i feel like if you love money and you want to be healed from loving money if you feel like that's what you cling to most then how about you find the areas to be content in Jesus and watch that love of money completely just be cured and faded out um, simply because you're finding contentment in Christ. See, because what happens here is when you shift, when you and I both shift from the love of money to finding our contentment in Jesus, um, we find our confidence in Him. We find confidence in the fact that we trust Him. We find confidence in the fact that He will provide for us. We're his, we're his children. Like, why wouldn't he? I've been in so many scenarios and situations in life where, um, you know, been homeless a couple of times and lost jobs and haven't been able to pay, you know, bills and, you know, light gets shut off for a few days and everything in a fridge spoils. And listen, I had nothing. We had no money. We had nothing. You could ask my wife. But you know what? We really got to see, we really got to see uh, the Lord's provision in our life in so many different areas in so many different ways where people would just come and bring us food, where people would just, you know, I, we would get random checks in the mail. It doesn't happen for everyone, but it, but it does happen and it can happen to anyone, you know, but it, it'll be for the very same exact amount, you know, to pay off the light bill, you know what I'm saying? And But while we're going through those tests, uh, through those trials, we really begin to see in our very own heart what what it what it is exactly that we're holding on to what it is exactly that we're clinging to so closely you know and 
And I feel like the Lord allows things like that in our life so that way we can see for ourselves and then we can make a decision to to run to him, to lean on him, to remember him, to choose him um, rather than choosing ourselves or our very own source of provision. So um, any thoughts, guys? Any thoughts? It's awesome. The sun came out. I don't know if you guys can see me clearly, um, but it's fine. Got a couple of minutes here, and then we'll go ahead and just wrap it up. Um, verse 7 says, and then uh, this is probably where I'm going to end the rest of my time, and then I want to challenge you guys. Read through the rest of this chapter. You know, uh, share what you're getting. Um, I, I, I feel like, you know, we're going to be able to contribute to one another. This is such a blessing. I am so grateful. Um, you know, to be a part of this community, even in this community here and, and at Amplified, where we're able to dialogue with, you know, with each other about these scriptures and things of that sort. But I want to bring this to mind because I really believe this is important. And I'll focus on verse 7 and then I'll focus on verse 17. Um, and it says, remember your leaders, who uh, those who spoke to you the word of God, consider their outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Look at your leadership around you. We have to see what their outcome of life is. The very people who speak the word of God to you constantly, you know, people like Pastor Leah, Pastor Larry, you know, um, uh, Pastor Nate, Stephanie, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Zizi constantly singing over us. Consider their life, consider their, their way of, of living. You know, those who are in different churches, look at your leadership, look at your leaders, consider those, remember them, remember them in a place of prayer, remember them in a place of fasting, remember them, you know.